Good evening and welcome to Glendale Library. Uh, today is June 21st, 2014, and our event tonight is a continuation of our Stop Corruption, Stop Armenian Corruption. Uh, tonight we are going to be presenting a film about election fraud which took place in 2013 for the Armenian presidential elections. Uh, and tonight our guest is Robert Davidian, who is a documentary filmmaker. Um, he's a New York born Armenian who grew up knowing he was Armenian and he also decided at some point in his life that he wanted to do something because of the things that he witnessed and the things that he saw going on in Armenia. So with no further ado, I'd like to invite Robert up to the stage. Tell us a little bit about himself and his work, and then we're going to be uh, seeing his movie about election fraud. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yes, I'm American Armenian. I don't speak much Armenian, but it doesn't matter because as a wise man once said, I'm not born in Armenia, but Armenia is born in me. Uh, I've been going to Armenia for two decades and making many friends and contacts there. I recommend everyone do that. And hearing stories about how life is in reality over there and how they're being um, abused by the government. Uh, the government, the certain elements of the government are uh, criminals that are thieves and it's the worst kind of theft, they're stealing money from the people that need it. Uh, and so I have to do whatever I can do, at least to expose it. So this is just one of uh, two movies that I did, Armenian Activist 2, Armenian Activist Now 2. And Armenian Activist Now 1 is about all the activism going on in Armenia. Both films are on the back table if you want to get a copy. Um, so we'll just start this. Is there any question to start with? Yeah, okay. All right, here it is. Election fraud, 
And sadly, because of our unity at the time, we weren't really able to take it to the next step. I met with Rafael Vanessa when he came here to Los Angeles after the elections, some months after the elections, to ask him, what, what is the next step? What, what can we do to support you to take it to the next level? And I made some suggestions, which I, I shared with him, which I'm not going to share with you tonight, because um, they're not important. But what I did learn over that period of time was that unity which is needed for change, for true change. Yes, it takes a few to get the, the, the spark going and the fire going, but it takes the masses really to make it really happen and really stick. And that's one thing that Rafi didn't have. His support team very quickly became disillusioned. Um, they started playing the blame game with a certain segment of them. And he couldn't go any further than he went today. So I personally don't blame Rafael Benesan. I congratulate him for doing what he was able to do. Yes, he wasn't amongst the, the activists or the, uh, the opposition, shall we say. They did have a much grander plan of actually not having an election. And Rafi went outside of that realm, though there were also others that did. So he did do the right thing. And um, now what I would like to do is I would like to shift over to what can we do? Because this is the most important thing. We talked about what happened. We saw what happened. We witnessed what happened. I'll tell you what happened after the elections here in Los Angeles. A small group of us got together, and some of them are here today, and we immediately organized a protest. And we had our first protest in front of the Consulate General's office on Central. And it was pretty well attended. Um, it was covered on television, also local television. And we had quite a bit, uh, quite a bit turnout. We started the Pade movement in Los Angeles, which was a continuation of what Rafi had started with his movement. And you saw the balloons. We had a balloon launch and so on and so forth. Following that, I went on a hunger strike. Um, to protest the U.S. government, because it's not only about what goes on in Armenia that affects Armenia, it actually is what goes on in the United States of America that affects the world. And Armenia is not exempt to the effects of U.S. foreign policy. And immediately after um, Ser Sarkisian announced his victory, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, sent a congratulatory message to uh, the Armenian government congratulating Ser Sarkisian. So that triggered myself to go on hunger strike. And I made my way all the way across the United States in a camper. I camped out in front of our Congress representative at a ship office initially, and then made my way across the United States. When he was inaugurated by the, uh, the, the so-called Catholicus of all Armenians, God II, um, my hunger strike ended. And we went on to our next step, which was to start exposing what's really going on in Armenia. So what can you do? First of all, uh, there are a few things you can do by not doing that is, that's helpful. The first thing I would suggest is, all of you know, uh, the Armenian government's flagship of uh, fundraising for nation development or nation building is the All Armenia Fund. And I've done extensive research about the All Armenia Fund, which is government controlled, even though they'll tell you it's not. Um, it is controlled by Serge Sarkisian, the de facto president of Armenia, who fraudulently was re-elected, and it is controlled by high-ranking government officials, including even on their board is the Catholicus of All Armenians. And when you donate to the All Armenia Fund, what you are doing is hindering nation building. Because, unfortunately, what the All Armenia Fund does for the most part is does things that the Armenian government is obligated to do. And those obligations are not fulfilled by the Armenian government because somebody is doing something, so the people sit and hope that you know, things are going to change. And in fact, when we collect $20 million for the All Armenia Fund, the Armenian government and the oligarchs are usually evading up to $750,000 in... I'm sorry, $750 million. I wish it was $1,000. $750 million in taxes, uh, mis misappropriation or misspending of the national budget and so on. So you can just imagine how many times more work can be done if there was no corruption in Armenia. And that's what Robert is working on as far as his documenting is we have to put an end to this. So what can you not do? You cannot donate to the All Armenia Fund. You, cannot, you could also not support any organization that recognizes 
the legitimacy of the Armenian government today because they're not legitimate. That's the, first, the easy thing to do, is just sit back and don't do anything. So if, you, if you're giving to the Armenian Fund, if you're supporting any organization, and that includes even the AGBU, the ANCA, the Armenian Assembly, and so on, those organizations, those are the big ones, those organizations that recognize the Armenian government are not helping us, they're actually hurting us today. And we've been reaching out. We have some people here who have actually taken it upon themselves also to any chance they get, reach out to them to point out the obvious. And of course, they're usually being ignored, but the fact is that this is really what's going on today. So those are the things you can do by not doing anything. Now, what can you do in order to support a popular movement or to support change in Armenia? Well, first and foremost, you, everybody needs to get involved. I'm sorry, it's not one of these, I'll just give you know some money and it'll get fixed. No, everybody needs to have their voice heard. Because even in America today, we see what's going on, and we have no choice. We all have to get involved if this world is going to become a little better place for us, for the, the masses. Because big businesses and people in power are out for themselves, as most, well, most of you have seen. So everybody needs to get involved somehow. Find out what, you, what you're comfortable with doing, whether you want to do it on your own, whether you want to get involved. We've got a group on Facebook even called Stop Armenian Corruption. Stop Corruption. Stop Corruption. No, it's Stop, it's stop Corruption. Stop Corruption. Well, we have that too, but it's the overall thing is Stop Armenian Corruption. So basically, get involved and do your little part because every, if everybody does it, it's going to make our lives easier too, so we don't have to do carry so much weight. And I know a lot of people here that are sitting here today, they are involved already, but I, again, encourage everybody to get involved somehow. So we're going to now switch over to Q&A, and if there are any questions, Robert, I'm going to invite you up to the podium, because I'm sure people have some questions about your film. Um, you can come forward, and there's a microphone here on the, on the stage, so I would encourage you to come forward, pick up the microphone, and uh, if you have any questions for Robert, or any general questions, or also comments, you know, we do welcome comments always. Please come forward and make a comment. So first, I would like to ask a question just to get this started from Robert. Uh, Robert, if you could tell us, please, what possessed you to do this? This is a, a huge task. It had to be done, but really, what possessed you to do this? You have a, you know, you live in the United States, you have a comfortable life and so on. Please tell us what you, what you would like to, uh, you know, I live in the United States, but I also have friends and I visit Armenia often. So um, we're all members of the world. And where there's injustice, I think we should work and do our best to stop it. Uh, so that's why I went there. And um, the election, everyone knew that it would be fraudulent before it happened. So that's how I knew I planned a movie around it. Any question about the movie at all? Well, yes. I wanted to thank you and everyone else for participating in the week because it's very inspiring for me as someone from Armenia. Uh, very inspiring and everything is changing and actually I'm very happy to see the current changes. So, but um, a, movie, a question that comes to mind, whether you want it or not, is did you, while you were filming, while you were working in Armenia, did you uh, feel for, for your life at any point? Like, you see the meeting of people and by the way, shot. Yeah. Have you felt that? No, I don't feel it. But I am aware of it. I was kind you of know, worried you, about you. Thank you very much, honey. That's all. <laughs> Someone cares. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, no. Uh, you know, even though I'm making this movie and it's shocking to see all the fraud and all the criminals, uh, <clears throat> there's many, many more brave activists in Armenia on the line, putting their bodies on the line. You saw, um, I'm just showing the pictures and interviews, so I look at it that way. I'm just exposing it to us and to the world, you know, the diaspora. Well, this was very well done because it's a combination of different periods of time. 
uh, where the, the last uh, beginning from what time to what time, maybe you can give us an explanation. Yeah. I mean, it starts in February of 2013. I went to Armenia, one of the only times I've ever been there in the winter. And, um, and the protesters were out, so I started shooting all that. And then it goes on until, uh, until May, we had a protest in front of the consulate. So in Los Angeles. So we're all, you know, we're all connected, you know, whether it's Los Angeles or Armenia, we're all working with the same goal, you know, justice. Yeah. So my next question is, what do you expect the next presidential elections will be like and how we can prepare? <coughs> So that the main thing is that what is this regime, existing regime, protecting? Oh, well, they're protecting their ability to be thieves. <laughs> their ability to their ability to be thieves. They're ripping off the country. They're stealing as much money as they can. They'll put on any act to act like they're in a legitimate government. But they're they're just stealing as much money as they can. And succeeding. So who is benefiting from that? No one, no good Armenian I know in Armenia. Uh, no good, no one here should think anyone is benefiting from that, except the thieves, the criminals. We know that uh, Russia is with the present regime, or the present regime is with Russia. And, and regarding um, Rafi Omanesian, maybe he represented the uh, American policy. Maybe that type of uh, conflict was going on, or what? Oh. All I know is that um, the election results showed the actual reviewed results after the official results that were fraudulent showed that Rafi got more votes than the other candidate. So I think it's the, the public chose their candidate. Yeah, but now you know that uh, Armenia is getting close to the, um, what do you call, Matsain, uh, what is it? Customs Union. Customs Union. It's a, it's a Soviet, it's a, it's a Russian uh, backed um, trade agreement, but there's a choice, either the EU or uh, the Russian trade agreement. And, um, so was, do you think that these elections were, was a conflict between pro-Russian and pro-Western policies? Or, no. Or what was it? No, I don't. No, I think it was a, a conflict between corruption and not corruption and justice. I think people are sick and tired of being ripped off their, for generations. And, and now it's time, and they, they voted for Rafi. What type of policies do you think Rafi was going to follow regarding what's going on today? Because many times, um, I, what I see is a, a Western and Eastern conflict. And the present regime is using that to keep their power. Let me, let me say something about that, because um, what I'd like to add to that, if, I would agree with you if this was the first time we had an election fraud. But unfortunately, our election fraud goes back to the very early days, in fact, probably the first election we had. Yeah. And basically, the way that because I've lived in Armenia for many years, and I, I saw what was going on behind the scenes, and I've had contact with government officials and common people, and was able to make my own observations and conclusions. And the reality is that if anybody other than Ser Sakisyan, Robert Kochavian, or Lebrunet Pedrosian, or somebody within their circle was elected, their entire um, kingdom, if you want to call that, would completely collapse and crumble and they would be facing criminal charges. They know this. Right. Um, they have stolen so much, as we talked about, there are literally billions of dollars which have been not collected 
from taxes, misappropriation, from the state budget being mismanaged, and so on. And all of that under Rafi's, uh, Rafi's uh, presidency, most of that, if not all of that, would have come out. And that would have been disastrous for the current regime. It would have been very good for the people. As far as picking between the uh, European Union and the trade union, I don't think that Armenia is, I mean, now it's being accelerated, but it took so many years before they've been talking about the European Union for so many years. I don't believe that Armenia has to necessarily join one of those unions in order to survive, because at this point, as long as there's corruption in Armenia, it's dangerous for Armenia to open its borders with Turkey and to start bringing in, you know, these different programs, various programs, which will have a long-term effect on the country. For instance, today, we have a very big debt to the International, not the International Monetary Fund, to the World Bank, and we're manipulated by the International Monetary Fund to do things that they want us to do. Again, this gets back to U.S. foreign policy. Of course, the Russian government or the other governments around are no angels either and don't have the best interests of Armenia. But I really believe that these elections are just a continuation of this dictatorial dictatorial rule that we've been under since Levon de Petrosian. There has never been democracy in Armenia since independence. And this is just a continuation of that. Rafi, I don't know whether he would have dragged us into this union, that union, or whatever, but I do know that he was about rule of law. You know, he's American born, born and raised here, and I truly believe that genuinely that was his um, his agenda. I mean, I spoke to Rafi, and I think that just looking at him as a person, there may be some questionable things that people had, there may be some things that people don't agree with, but the core values that he was going to bring to the table were that rule of law and what's best for the people and what's best for the country. So how can this group be better organized? Do you have membership or what's going on? We don't have... That's my last question. Yeah, okay, thank you. We don't have membership per se because we are not an organization as far as an organization goes. There are issues that are going on in Armenia, in the United States, that affect Armenians, which we do address. And, for instance, when the election took place, we mobilized and we did that. We have a project right now that we're working on that hopefully we'll be presenting within the next couple months, um, and hopefully we'll actually have it started before we present it, uh, which will hopefully empower the masses in Armenia. And it will, uh, we're hoping will have a, uh, a, an effect that will, will, a big effect that will not require elections to have to take place in order for change or some sort of revolution. And, and the thing about revolutions in Armenia and in the former Soviet republics are they're usually bloody and they're usually not that effective. So we have to find ways which we can implement change within the people, because the people are changing today. The people have changed, and the people need everyone to participate in a way which is going to be helpful and not hurtful. And that's why I always go back to, don't support those organizations which support the Armenian government today because they're not legitimate. Yeah, you can go to step forward to the microphone. Okay. Yesterday I was talking to my nephew's wife, she's from Armenia, they live in Canada. She said, my friend is visiting from Armenia and eventually they're going to move here. I said, why are they moving, you know, why are they leaving Armenia? She says, her husband has a great job in Armenia, he's an auditor and he's making lots of money. He wants to open business, but he's so scared to open business in Armenia. They're originally Ar from Armenia and they want to leave. I mean, it's just such a shame, you know, it's so sad what's happening. Nobody, everybody's scared, even the rich, you know, they want to leave Armenia. That's what I'm trying to say. The poor, they're suffering, you know, they, they're already stranded there. Uh, and, and it's so ironic <laughs> what U.S. is doing to the whole Middle East. Syria had, you know, fair elections all legitimate elections observed by international monitors, and they still want to go destroy, you know, a democratic country. It's just so ironic what's going on. I just want to 
you guys to think about all this. Are there any other questions? Yes, please. Sure, well, we've got two more, actually. Just I just wanted to thank Robert and Ara for doing everything possible to raise awareness. And I really believe that it's here in the diaspora, outside of Armenia, the only possible thing we, we can do is raise awareness. That's how we can um, find solutions and, and support uh, and, and uh, I think the only possible way is if we continue having the meetings and, and, and finding um, opportunities like this to get together. But uh, um, my question would be what would you think would be a good um, positive change from our part? What, what can the diaspora do well, specifically to bring some change? I'll, I'll, I'll um, address that. And it's important not to legitimize the government because they're not legitimate. And um, there are so many organizations that we give to here that are begging for money. So just I would just stop doing that. Yeah, go ahead. Are you worried about alienating the majority of our kids by saying that? I mean, if you talk bad about the I just, I just these are organizations, I'm not defending them, but these are mainstream organizations that are doing something to our There's, There's, there's other... Uh, you're, you're diminishing our cause into a 1% of the population. I'm just concerned that we're... Well, we're speaking the truth, first of all. We should, but we should not, we should not disrespect other organizations. Um, well, let me, let me just say something is, those organizations are disrespecting the Armenian country and disrespecting us as a whole without by their actions. And if they're doing such a thing, then it, they need to be called on it. And we've made it very clear, Hadouj was up here, he does it on a weekly basis. He points it out to them, they don't like it. And they even get in our face sometimes and say, well, what do you expect us to do, or you, I hope that you're even saying those things. The reality is that as long as we support the illegitimate Armenian government and give them strength and give them resources and give them relief to doing what they're supposed to do, they will only fester and grow. They're like cancer. And if you feed cancer, it's gonna grow and eventually it's gonna take over. So though that majority of people who say we may be alienated, first of all, most people are disengaged. Most Armenians, the majority are already disengaged. So if we're going to say that, oh, we have to worry about that small percentage that is engaged and forget about the ones that are disengaged, no, we need to get the, the masses engaged. We need to get people to come to terms. Because again, we're facing, another thing that I'm involved in and Irena is involved in and Robert and everybody's involved in is some of the things that are going on here, not just in Armenia. And it's our own U.S. government and Americans are disengaged. Americans are asleep as Armenians are asleep. And because they're asleep, it's like a runaway train without, a, without a, an engineer, and it's a disaster that's going to happen. And if we don't do something, and if we don't put the brakes on it, like Robert says, if we don't point out the truth and demand change, us, because we are what counts. We are really what counts. The 1%, put that to one side, it's the 99% that we really need to work on, and we need to try to get as many of them engaged as possible. And yes, this was a very difficult film to watch. It was very difficult, it was very sad. It almost was one of these hopeless things because we know what happened after this film was made. Things got worse. Things are getting worse in Armenia. Armenia is depopulated. The prime minister today is somebody named Hovi, the mouse, Abrahamian. And he is a person I would not want as my prime minister or my leader of any type. And why are the rich scared? Because now Hovi is after their money too. That's why the rich, where they then said they're leaving, they want to leave Armenia, is because the, actually the rich are getting suppressed now. They're being told to pay their taxes, because we made a big stick last November about the taxes not being paid, and all of a sudden there was either a response because of all this uproar that we made, amongst not just us, but others throughout the community, and now they're collecting some of those taxes. But are those taxes going to be properly used? Probably not. Probably not. Well, we got Bahamia, Sersa, Kisiyan, Kisiyan, they'll just get richer. 
Any, any other questions? Yes, please. If you can come forward. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to come a little bit this way. I think you guys can come Yes. So, first of all, I just thank like God that on Facebook, like, just by accident, just I clicked and I found this great man and uh, like Tata, what's going on? So I clicked on it and I'm interested in. So that's how I found out about this. Man. Otherwise, I wouldn't come and I wouldn't know. And many of my friends, they still don't know about like events like this. So that's first of all, and I really am thankful. I try to help as much as I can. And the other was like my parents, or my everything is in Yerba. And the last elections, my parents says that they took 5,000 uh, drums from, you know, for those. I said, Mom, why did you do that? I'm sending this much money to you. Isn't it enough? Why did you do that? And she said, OK, but it's like, how do you know it's not going to make any changes anyway? And who knows, maybe the other one who's going to come next to this one will be worse than this search. <laughs> so that's, it's OK. That's lots of money for us. Don't bother yourself. So my heart was bleeding when I saw those young men, students, on the streets. They could be one of my cousins. And it's really very bad. Man, it's bleeding for them. Whatever we can do, our country, we are really, what am I doing here in this country? I took my kids and we came here in 2001, only because I didn't have a job to support them. That's why, not just because I had some relatives over here, but just because I didn't have enough like, support and to support my family. So what I'm saying is, instead of making changes in our country, in our beautiful Armenia, you know, we're God blessing. Anyway, over there, we are here, making make changes over here in other countries, all over the world. Armenians, you know, wherever we are, it's blossoming, changing. Look at the blender now. It wasn't like this 30, 30 years ago. Now Armenians everywhere, very beautiful, and the same we could do in our country, but we are living and. It's getting worse and worse, as you said. So whatever we can do, I just wanted to say thank you. And hopefully we can do something. As she said, a lot of Armenians were left with no choice but to leave because there was no work. But the, the sad reality also is, when you're Armenian, you can never get away with it. It doesn't matter where you're going to go, eventually it's going to catch up with you. And today in Glendale, today in Los Angeles, the same Sef Sarkisyan mafia type figures are here today causing havoc, causing havoc uh, with cr their criminal activities here also. So this is not an Armenia problem only. And that's why I say we, we uh, started the organization of Stop Armenian Corruption. Originally, it was going to be Stop Corruption in Armenia. That's when we started, then we said, no, wait, there's another problem. We have corruption here. We have major corruption here. And so it's very important that, again, everybody get engaged, that you tell your friends to get engaged somehow. It doesn't matter if you join our group, or you join some other group, or you do something on your own. Just do something. Just do something. Any other questions? No? Okay, Robert. Thank you for the And I, I want to again thank everybody. I want to thank Glendale Library for hosting us today. And uh, by the way, this program was sponsored by the Shahan Nakadi Family Foundation. I should have said that at the very beginning. Uh, and over on the table, for those that want to be supportive of our initiatives, Everything on the table that is for sale, a small percentage is going to the Glendale Library, but it is also supporting programs like this because these programs aren't put on for free, unfortunately. So if anybody wants to be supportive, we have certain things over there. We have the um, corruption report from Policy Forum Armenian, uh, Armenia. We have the white paper, which I kind of touched on about the Armenia Fund. It's over there in English and Armenia. We have some t-shirts like this, which is Stop the Bombs in Syria, another initiative that we're involved in to stop the United States government from actually causing problems in the Middle East. And we're doing that not only because it's a human issue, but 
Armenia is on that list too. So we all have to stand up and put a stop to things that are going on in this country that are affecting other countries. So I encourage you to do that. And also there's a list over there, uh, a sign-in sheet, and if you do want to volunteer, please fill in the columns on the right-hand side also so we can contact you. Thank you very much.